Welcome to another Corona post show here at the Rip Curl Rottnest Search presented by Corona. And yesterday, big opening day of competition. And most of the surfers and most of us working behind the scenes had a great night's sleep, but there was 18 surfers that probably had restless nights in anticipation of getting the elimination rounds underway for the men and the women today on day two of the event window. And uh, we saw nice clean conditions once again, uh, a nice strong offshore blowing this morning, and we saw our competitors hit the lineup. Welcome once again to the show, Ronnie Blakey with Championship Tour Surfers from years gone by. Richie Lovett, Thank you, Tiffany mate. Stoyle, great to have you both on for the call. And uh, Rich, uh, again, clean conditions, but pretty challenging with three surfers in the lineup. Yeah, the swell just tapered off a little bit today, so there was some inconsistency in the sets. But when they did come, there was plenty of scope for some really high performance surfing. Uh, they laid it down, but some big upsets as well. Yeah, there was. Uh, pretty emotional, some of the competitors yesterday, Dimity. It's been a long leg, a lot of time away from home, and those run of poor results were starting to weigh heavy on some of the surfers. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's almost the halfway point, and it just feels like it gets heavier and heavier, these elimination rounds. And, yeah, it's... it's well, the emotion's really intense. Yeah, there were tears. There were tears, and there'll probably be more today. But right now, we're going to hear from a man who's got tears of joy in his eyes. Jacob Wilcox <laughs> has just made it through to the round of 32. He's down there with Stace. Thanks, Ron. Jacob, must feel nice to start a heat like that. Yeah, that was nice. Um, it's pretty slow, so, yeah, I feel like each minute that kind of went past, it kind of just made that start a bit more valuable. But, um, yeah, it's good to surf even more. So, um, it's been awesome watching him the last kind of month doing really well in all those comps it's pretty motivating and yeah to get surf with him was really fun and Jaddy, Jaddy's just an icon he's a legend and it's a shame not, not too many waves came through and we couldn't have a good battle talking about uh, people like morgan and yourself rip curl have supported you guys for such a long time how cool is it to be on the search in your own backyard yeah it's it's crazy yeah rip curl's been um played a massive part in my surfing career they've supported me the whole way through it and i'm so grateful for everything they've done for me and all these opportunities that they've given me as well and um yeah, hopefully I can really make the most of this one and we're on a, we're on a beautiful island over here. The, the waves are not too bad. I can't, hopefully we get some swell and I think everyone will really see what it's made of. And yeah, it's, a, it's a cool concept and I remember watching these events when I was young and at the press conference the other day seeing the big, the big um, trophy of the, um, the world. It was, yeah, pretty cool. Got to spin it to win it. See how you go. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Thanks. Yeah, through to the round of 32, Jacob Wilcox. He's had some wild card opportunities in the past, really wanting to make the most of, uh, of this call up. As we see there, Jadson Andre on screen, just processing uh, that 33rd, that big loss. Of course, saying goodbye to four surfers in the men's draw, and the majority of them, Rich, were the veterans. Yeah, it was a tough day for the older <laughs> statesmen and, and stateswomen of the, of the tour. Um, but this is this is the sport now. This is our tour. You can get these wild cards that come in the younger You know the young blood. They're so hungry and we've just touched on how important this result and this event has been You know, we're at a critical moment on the tour and and uh, yeah some heavy losses today Let's have a chat about that first elimination heat for the the men Dimity. such a great lineup on paper Yeah, and we knew it was going to be tough for Taj in these trickier small conditions. It was the heat of the day for sure I think everyone came from um, you know, even even all the servers who weren't in the elimination round came down to watch this It was just having Taj back in the lineup was incredible and these these two guys look up to him so much They do Griffin Colapinto rich. He, he just looks so comfortable at the moment at this level well, Griffin actually looked like the seasoned competitor in this one, and, and have a look at this. Picked off the biggest wave of the day and just annihilated it, just r really on attack mode. Didn't look like he was hesitating at all, just looked super confident. And uh, just without a lot of opportunities, he made the most of this one, and this was really the difference. And then uh, Jack as well, well, he's been desperate for a result and some great surfing from him. Again, just uh, bringing that form that, that saw him get onto the tour. The Jack, this, it was such a crucial moment. Great to see Taj bounce back and, and put in a good performance. You know, on the waves that he rode, he rode them well. And uh, just a little lacklustre in the amount of waves that came through in that heat. I had a chat to him. He was so bummed he didn't get the opportunity on a, a set wave on his back end, Dimity, because it is one of the, the sharpest that we've ever seen. Yeah, it definitely is. And, and we were devastated. Wish there was some more sets because him on a left is just so dangerous. Jack and Griffin both got a really nice one, but I would have loved to have seen Taj get one.
for sure. Uh, Rich, you had a, a really close look at our Boost Mobile Wave of the day. Let's bring it up now. Griffin Cola Pinto, love the subtle style, that little reach for the rail on the, the bottom turns and just setting up that big vertical approach. Yeah, absolutely. Just textbook backhand surfing from uh, Griffin Cola Pinto today, just coming so hard off the bottom, timing his manoeuvres perfectly, gets the grab rail, gets up and hooks it under the lip. Not just once, but twice, just so deep on that second bottom turn. And then he finished well. Got to the end, a little foam tap, and then, you know, another little foam climb. But just put that wave together so well, under pressure, because there weren't a lot of opportunities. He really had to really pull the trigger and pull it well when it happened, and he did it. Yeah, loving the vibe at the moment. Griffin Cola Pinto putting out a lot of good energy, looking very comfortable out here, and uh, he's... Going to be one to watch. He even said, I just didn't want to let Taj get a left because he knew how dangerous he was. Yeah, he's a weapon. And I love Griffin's little zen he does before the heat. It's just, it's so out of character for a guy so young and fresh on tour. And he's just like, he looks like a veteran doing that. Bit like Shimmy Disco before a DJ set. <laughs> just taking a moment. Yeah. Really gathering Getting your in thoughts. The zone. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll have a look at the Surfline forecast and show you our top five from today in just a moment. You're watching the Corona Post Show, having a look now at the forecast here for Rotnest as we move toward day three of the event window. Yeah, well, you can see all those pretty colours coming underneath uh, Australia there, and they're starting to swing past, which means we're, we're, we're operating on a dying swell, and you can see our position there on Rotnest Island. We're waiting for that swell. We've got a larger southwest swell that's going to build throughout the week here, but you can see Tuesday, Wednesday, in the sort of four, three to four foot face mark, uh, we've still got some nice uh, conditions, but 
that cross onshore wind is going to start coming into play over the next couple of days and then Thursday starting to look good again as that swell starts to trend up Wednesday evening. So we'll come down, we'll be checking it. Um, uh, the long range forecast looks pretty good as well. Yeah, we see some uh, opportunity out there, contestable conditions, good chance we'll be underway. Just to reiterate, falling out of the mix in the elimination round for the men, it was Taj Burrow, Jeremy Flores, Pedersen Crisanto and Jadson Andre. And on the tough. women's side, we had some tough heats and we're going to uh, talk about some of those results as we dive into our top five. And coming in at number five, Kyle Belly. Didn't he look sharp today? He did. He looked really good. He was just uh, back to that real quick lightning fast form that we're used to seeing from him. Picked up a couple of nice waves and he was really psyched, you know, before his heat. He was, as Dimini said, he was sort of taking a leap out of uh, Griffin's belt, really zenning out, but he exploded once uh, he got out in the lineup. Have a look at these nice right handers. Yeah, solid stuff. He got the jump on Stuart Kennedy, who, who made his return to the championship tour, and that meant we said goodbye to Pedersen Crisanto, but Coyo's one of those guys that looks right at home here in the West, performed great down at Margaret River Dimity, and that was a solid performance from him. Jacob yeah. Wilcox, though, at number four. Oh, Jacob Wilcox is so exciting to watch, and he's just got that WA flair. He just, he knows these spots, and he's, he's looking like he's meant to be on tour with that surfing. In marginal conditions, Rich, this guy can, can lay it down. He can get it done at the QS level, but proving that he's got his uh, CT chops as well. Mate, he actually came over to the East Coast for a long time just to get primed for the QS conditions. A little bit smaller, getting that, that uh, small weight whip just uh, really perfected. He has the big rail turns, he has the barrels, he's got that comfortable approach on the reefs. When he makes the tour, he's gonna be dangerous. Into the elimination heats for the women. Isabella Nichols doesn't want to drop out of the mix with the 17th again, and she showed that determination to get past her rivals in this heat. Bronte McCauley just continues to impress with just her brave performances, Timothy. Yeah, it was really cool to see the girls going right today, and we just got to see them open up and Isabella's got that really tight snap and so does Bronte, a really deep bottom turn. So those two really opened up and let loose. So Isabella and Bronte uh, progressed through. That meant Brisa Hennessy fell out of the mix here at the Rip Curl Rock Nest Search. Moving right on to our top five moment, number two. And this was uh, a big one. Tatiana Weston Webb has been in incredible form, but no denying Mia McCarthy here has her dad Matt watching on and cheered her on to uh, a big finish in this one, Rich. It was well, a huge upset. It was. It was a mature uh, approach to the heat for Mia. She found a couple of good rides and uh, bouncing back. Nikki Van Dyke, she had a bit of a, a shocker yesterday, but, uh, well, she brought the happy vibes this morning and she continued it out there in the heat, finding these nice little tight right-handers and doing some great work uh, to get through that heat and just, well, from hero to zero, unfortunately, and Tatiana, what a big blow. Not denying uh, what has been an incredible run for Tatiana, though. Still going to be sitting well and truly in the top five when she leaves Australia, no matter what unfolds. But getting into our number one moment today, Jeremy Flores went into his elimination round heat with a real uh, strategy to get himself on the set waves, Dimity, and it was all working out fine for a while. Yeah, and then Liam O'Brien just, he he finally got some good waves, and having Maddie in the, in the heat, it was a pretty intense ending with Jeremy, you know, thinking that Liam might have blocked him, but I think Liam just respects Jeremy so much as a fierce competitor that he didn't want to let Jeremy have any chance at a big left. Yeah, it was an interesting heat there. Uh, the youngster, not even on the tour, <laughs> he copped an earful from the veteran. You can see here, Jeremy was just in position to get the left here, and uh, Liam O'Brien, well, he took it from deep and, and sort of came around. He only got one decent turn on it. But the thing that happened was that uh, Manny McGillivray, he took the right hand up, got the score he needed, pushed Jeremy down into second. They're sort of, uh, you know, First teammates on the, on the Billabong team there. And, uh, well, they padded it out. And uh, Jeremy, he wasn't happy with the decision.
No, you got to love Jeremy Flores. A real shame for him. In fact, it was a tough day because we were talking about it, Rich, when we were uh, calling some of those heats. It felt like there was enough opportunity for two surfers, but three was a bit of a stretch. We saw some people on the wrong side of the rhythm. Yeah, and, and Jeremy did have a strategy, his strategy in that heat. He was going to focus on the bigger lefts, get that backhand wound up, and uh, just got one wave short, unfortunately. And, and uh, well, strategy came into play. The, 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 the grommets, they used the rules to their advantage and uh, unfortunately didn't it didn't sit well with Jezza. Now we can focus on some of the big matchups to come in the round of 32. Heat number five, we'll see Felipe Toledo up against the young gun, Dimity, Liam O'Brien. How do you like Liam's chances? Liam O'Brien is actually one of my favourite surfers. He's got the best style and he's just got that Gold Coast point break, beautiful style. I'd love to see him open up and we haven't quite seen his best yet, so hopefully that's it. Yeah, it's a, it's a head on with a, a very informed Felipe Toledo, though. He's going to be hard to beat. Heat number six, uh, two of the, the newcomers to the championship tour, Rich. Uh, these guys both ha have weapons, backside, front side. They can go to the air. They've got good rail turns, too. They're, they're actually really s quite similar in the way that matched up those two. And, uh, and I, I do think if we do get this onshore breeze that's going to come, it's going to change things a little bit. And we're going to see the airs come into play. So that one in particular is going to be exciting to watch. Heat three, the round of 16. Stephanie Gilmore will take on Nikki Van Dyke, and that is going to be a lot of fun to watch because surfers like Nikki are chasing huge results here. So we'll see how she fares. Check out all the matchups at worldsurfleague.com. Tune in bright and early to see what the call is and enjoy the highlights from today. It's a gorgeous Monday morning here on Rottnest Island, and the world best are preparing for another day of competition. I'm a killer, then I'm perfected. Tatiana's gonna need a pretty big number here, Joe. Tatiana will go down. I'm picture perfect. Three huge names all vying for a place in the uh, round of 32. Under the surface, yeah. Jeremy Flores holding on a second position, but McGilvray is going to put up a solid score. Just flaring that one out of the lip. Flores, a 33rd here. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.